Hello and welcome to episode 27 of Novel Knits. My name is Danelle and this is my YouTube channel where I talk about what I'm knitting and what I'm reading. Thank you so much for joining me today. I've had to start this over so many times because I apparently cannot speak today. So I'm going to try to slow down, drink some tea, and not make so many mistakes. I'm coming to you from my basement in southeastern Wisconsin, where I live with my husband Nathan, our daughter Claire who's 14, and our son Milo who's 11. We also have a dog named Penelope, and unfortunately our fish named Aang recently passed away. Um, he had a few tumors, which my daughter did some research and um, learned that that's a little common for beta fish to get these kind of tumors on their bodies. I don't know if it really is. I didn't do the research, um, but it made her feel better that it was common and it happens to beta fish from time to time. And we could tell he was sort of on his way out, but it still hit my daughter pretty hard. She, she gets very emotionally attached to all of her pets and her fish are no different. So she was very sad. Um, we flushed him and it's all okay. Yeah, I have prize winners today for my two make-alongs. I am doing Shop Your Stash 2022, which is make anything that using stash yarn, you can knit or crochet. And I also have a prize today for Sweater Year 2022, which is make sweaters this year. <laughs> They're two year-long make-alongs. Um, unfortunately, today I will not have any notes below my video. I have to, when I'm finished recording this, I'm gonna try to do a few small edits if I need to. Usually I need to cut out a few things. Um, and then I'm gonna post it, and then I leave for a work trip this week, and I won't be around. <laughs> so I don't have time to add any notes. So if you have any questions, just feel free to reach out to me on Instagram or Ravelry, where I'm Novel Knit Girl in both places, or you can send me an email at novelknitgirl at gmail.com, and I will get back to you within a week. Um, normally I'm pretty fast about getting back to comments. Um, it might be a little slower this week, but just know it's not personal. I'm just really busy with work travel this week. And I don't know how, if any of you guys ever work travel for work, but um, for me, there's not a lot of downtime. <laughs> yeah, like 7.30 in the morning till eight o'clock at night, and then I just wanna go to bed. So we are almost done with this year long, make along spectacular. <laughs> It has been so fun for me. I hope those of you who've been participating have been having fun. It's, um, I think it's a challenge, right? To use the yarn that you have and um, I don't know. And for me, it's been a challenge to focus on sweaters instead of socks because I am such a sock knitter. Uh, I've definitely fallen behind a little bit and fallen off a tad because you'll see when I get to my whips today that um, I, I have sock fever again. It doesn't ever really go away. But anyway, let me get into the prize winners because that's more exciting. <laughs> so um, the two prizes I have, um, this is the prize for sweater year 2022. It is this beautiful dream in color, smooshy sock set. Oh, I just love it. It's so pretty. And so that is sweater year 2022. And the winner for that is Audio Anne, which is Anne. Yay! Congratulations, Anne. That's so great. Um, you've been making a lot of stuff, so I hope that you can use this yarn to make something as well. And so this is the yarn for the... Shop Your Stash 2022. Oh my gosh. I Full disclosure, I've already recorded this a few times and I keep messing up. So I Shop Your Stash 2022 is this beautiful yarn also from Dream and Color. It's like very similar but different and this is like a really 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 deep blue. I love it and the winner of this one is Linda. Congratulations! So reach out to me Instagram, Ravelry, Gmail, however you want and when I'm back in town I will get these in the mail to you. So yeah! After this, we just have one more prize pull at the end of December, and that'll be great. I already have some things put together for that. I just thought I would show really quickly what I have so far, what I'm thinking. Um, 
I am in a different place today, so my stuff is all over and I'll probably be reaching around a lot. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, for the end of the year, for sweater year 2022, I am going to donate this copy of Worsted um, by Amy Gilly of La Bienna May. And this is a line of publication. It is just gorgeous. I did use this to make my stratified sweater, but I did not make any notes or any markings in it. Um, but you know, the photography in this is just phenomenal and it's lovely. And I, I got this, I enjoyed it. I made a pattern out of it and I don't see myself using it again in the future. So I thought this would be a great thing to gift out to one of you, um, for sweater year. Cause there's some beautiful sweaters in here. And then to go along with it, I have these two amazing skeins of Plucky Knitter, their trusty fingering, and this color is Freshman, and it is just really nice. I This is like my favorite kind of gray, a gray with like colors in it. So that is for the sweater year. And then, sorry, this is going to be a big reach. Ugh, for Shop Your Stash, I have this also line of magazine. Well, it's not a magazine, this line of book. 52 weeks of shawls. And if you know Lina, you know that their photography is just incredible. It's a beautiful book. Um, unfortunately, I've had this for over a year and I just haven't cracked it open to look at it or make a shawl. So I thought this would be a good thing to gift to one of you who might really enjoy it. And then along with this one, I have these beautiful skeins of Canon hand dyes. Um, this colorway is called Lady Whistledown, and it is just so subtle and beautiful, and I think it's really, really pretty, and it's really soft, really beautiful yarn. So there's two skeins of this, and that's what I have so far. There will probably be a few other little prizes that go in there, too, like um, a Progress Keeper, or I have a couple other things in my head that I might send out. And then, because it's the end of the year, I also want to give... Um, a pattern prize to two people as well. So in addition to those two prizes, there will also be pattern prizes given away um, for both of the make-alongs. So I really enjoyed this. Um, I've enjoyed doing a make-along, two make-alongs. I've, I've really enjoyed giving away prizes. I've enjoyed getting to know all of you through these make-alongs. Um, but I'm ready for these two to be done. <laughs> Mostly because I'm tired of talking about them, but that's just me. So again, congratulations to the winners. Please reach out to me. Just know if I'm slow to respond, it's not, it's just that I'm out of town and I will be back to my normal. Well, no, I won't really. I'll be back for a week and then I have to travel again. So I'm a, a crazy lady right now because <laughs> I don't normally travel for work. Sometimes on a normal year, I travel once a year and this time I'm traveling twice in the same month with two completely different teams and it's all fine and I'm going to beautiful locations but I am a homebody and I would just rather be home if given the you know choice anyway either here nor there before I get into what I'm working on I'm just gonna talk about what I'm wearing really quickly this is my reluctant homeschooler this was um, a sweater designed by Caitlin Hunter of Boyland Knitworks I made this out of knit picks City Tweed in the color Obsidian, and I held it double. Let me stand up really quick so you can see how it fits. I, oops, and you can see I'm wearing sweatpants. Um, I really like that these have pockets, and these are the buttons I used from Katrinkles, and they do work. I did just button the wrong buttonhole, but they do work. Um, I got gauge with the City Tweed holding it single, but I didn't like the gauge. It was very open and I wanted this to be a heavy sweater for the winter. It's a little warm today for this sweater, but I wanted to wear it. <laughs> um, and it, I did achieve that. It is heavy. It is bulky. I held the, the yarn double and made the smallest size and it worked out. That doesn't always work when you take a gamble like that but in this situation it did and i'm really happy with this i think it looks really nice and for the style of the sweater i'm super happy with the fit and everything about it all right i don't think i have anything else i need to talk about before we get into my current work works in progress but 
my hair today is not, it's fine. All right. So I'm only gonna show you one established whip today. Everything else is new cast-ons and I have no regrets. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me. I'm now back into that cycle where I've got like 20 whips again and it bothers me, but it doesn't. Like, I don't know. I think I just have to stop trying to be something I'm not. It brings me joy to cast on all the things all the time. So I think I'm just going to go with that from now on. I'm not going to like beat myself up about like, I was like, you really shouldn't cast on all these socks. There's no reason for you to sh for you to do that. And then I thought, there's no reason for me not to do it. If I want to cast on a new sock or four or five, go for it. So I did. I cast it on all the socks. And I, I really thought summer sock camp and sock bingo would kind of cure me of sock socks for a while, but it didn't. And now it's October. There's always a reason to make a sock, right? And then Advent is going to start. And, you know, there's always a reason to make a sock. So I'm, I'm fine with it. I'm not beating myself up. My first new cast on, which was cast on on September 25th, are the Read More Socks by Nicole from the Professor Pearl podcast, but she's Prof Pearl on Instagram. And I saw her show these socks on her, on her YouTube channel, and I was like, I love those. And then when I won her prize, I was like, I'll test it for you. I would love to. And I put my hat in or my name in the hat for test knitting and I was chosen. So yeah, I love these socks. They're DK weight and they're gorgeous. So this is the first one. It is almost a uh, hoe, but not quite because I don't have a heel on it yet. These are started toe up and it's got this gorgeous, gorgeous cabling on the front, which is just stunning. And it's so easy and you can do it without a cable needle. And then I think hers has more of the main color and like this is more just accent color, but I love this second color so much that I just wanted to do the entire cuff in this color. And then I just did the super simple stretchy bind off or something like that. It flares a little bit, but it's a sock and it's fine. So this is the front. The showstopper part of these is the duplicate stitch on the bottom and one foot says read and the other says more and I really, really love it. Duplicate stitch is not, it's not something that came easily to me. I had a really difficult time. It wasn't intuitive. It probably doing this R took about three different times sitting down, but then when I got it, I got it. My, I am about one stitch shifted on the bottom of my foot, but I'm fine. I'm not doing it again. <laughs> Um, it is a mess on the inside. There's going to be some weaving in to do, but I do really, really, really like this. It's really cool and it's great. So I have to cut in the heel and then this one will be done. And then I am on the second sock. Oh dear. So this is how far I am on the second sock. Again, with the beautiful cabling, such an easy pattern. If you are intimidated by cables, do this. It's it's a four row repeat and it's, you can cable without a cable needle and it's beautiful. And then here's the more. So read more. So they're fun, right? I really like these. And I mean, because I read all the time, I really felt like I needed a pair of read more socks. I don't know. I did also Kimber from Kimber's Cozy Creations put together a sock set for Nicole's pattern and I did purchase that as well because I think I'm gonna make a pair of these for my mom for her for Christmas um, I may or may not do the duplicate stitch though I'm not sure I love it that much that I want to do it more than once but I do love the the cabling and the rest of the socks so I'm for sure gonna do the sock again just not sure about the the um, duplicate stitch but this pattern will be coming out in November. I am test knitting it. I don't know if I said that at the beginning. So it's a test knit right now. It'll be coming out, I believe, in November. And what else was I going to say about it? 
I don't remember. I felt like there was a thought there and it just flew away. So if I, if it comes back to me, I will let you know, but I absolutely adore this, this, this project. And, um, yeah. And this whole experience of test knitting for Nicole has been super positive and really great. The group of people are all on, um, on a chat on Instagram. And so we're showing each other our projects and, you know, I mean, I'd never duplicate stitch before, so I felt so proud, like showing them all my duplicate stitch and it, it's been a lot of fun. So this is in a bag by Fancy Boy Designs. He has a shop on Etsy and it says, we don't camp, we glamp. And I really like this bag, it's a good one. I just wish I remember what that thought was, but it's completely gone now and I'm just gonna let it go. So, the, what really started my sock, what really started my sock re-obsession, my sock fever, if you will, was I had two skeins of yarn caked up and I'd been staring at them for a while, just thinking, I really wanna knit with that yarn. <laughs> so I found this pattern on Ravelry that I owned. Hmm. I don't know where I put the I don't know where I put the title page, but it's called Textured Socks Three Ways by Dana Ray Makes. And this is the textures. So I am making this one and this one right now. And the third one is going to come in the future sometime because these patterns are just knits and pearls. And there's something so enjoyable about both of these socks that they they just have brought me so much joy. So this is the first one I'm calling it um, textured sock number one <laughs> in my Ravelry. And here it is. It is just knits and pearls and it's just so pretty. And I love this yarn it is by Dragon Horde Designs, Tristan. And this is called Vintage Fall. And normally I really don't love it when yarn kind of pools and flashes like this and spirals, but this color is so good that it doesn't bother me. And it's so fun to knit with it because it's just always changing and I I just love this texture it is so pretty so this one has my heart very hard I love this the other one's a close second I mean I love this one too <laughs> and again it's just knits and pearls I think she calls this one stacked circles so like I don't really see stacked circles do you but I like it. So this one is Lolo Did It, the Quibbler colorway. And both of these are knit with a US size one needle, which is 2.25 millimeters, I believe, on a magic loop. And I am doing a fish lips kiss heel for both. And weirdly, I messed up the fish lips kiss heel on both of them. I don't know what happened. Like normally I can just like pull this one out of the depths of my, the recesses of my mind back here. And I made a mistake on both of these, so I don't know if I need to review the pattern or what, um, but I just finished the uh, the heel on this one, so I'll be doing the foot next. And these are gonna come with me on my trip because I'm enjoying both of these so, so much. So I thought these would be really good for the plane, and I have them in the same bag. This is a bag by Tanny Casey. And I'll just throw this in um, my travel bag and do work on these on the plane because they bring me joy. I love the yarns, I love the pattern. It's so easy and yeah. So highly, highly, highly recommend this pattern. Um, it's a, it's one pattern on Ravelry. I don't know if she has a website if you can't use Ravelry, but um, so it's three basic socks and just knit and purl textures to just give it a little interest. And that has really been making my day. Textured socks are what I'm all about right now, as you'll see. <laughs> so. These are awesome. And I cast these on on September 16th and these were like my gateway. These were like the sock gateway where I was like, I wanna make all the socks. So that's, that happened. Okay. And then like winter is coming, right? Christmas, if you celebrate, is coming. And I have, I always make gifts for people for Christmas. So my Christmas gift knitting is starting to kick in. And I did decide not to do the Stephen West mystery shawl this year. 
I'm, I have mixed emotions about it. I've done it the last two years. I love being part of it. I love making the shawls, but I have not ever worn, well, that's not true. I wore my slip extravaganza once, but I don't wear the shawls that I make from Stephen West. So I'm okay with sitting out this time. And to those of you doing it, I love seeing your pictures. I love seeing your progress. I, I'm like totally cheering you on. I just decided it's the time of year for this make long that's hard for me because I need to start doing my holiday knitting. And plus I want to finish at least five more sweaters by the end of the year. Can I do it? Probably not. But am I going to try? Sure. I'm going to try. Um, but yeah, so I, I decided to sit out of the mystery, the Stephen West mystery knit along, but I decided if I was going to do that, then I had to make good on starting some Christmas gifts. So that's what I'm doing. See how I can rationalize? I'm a good rationalizer. So this is in a little bag by I Heart You, another camping bag. I, I do like to camp in an RV or a camper with toilets and locked doors. So I'm a glamper for sure. So my sister-in-law, Heather, um, we've known each other now for over 20 years because I'm married to her brother. <laughs> and we have an Etsy shop, Pencil and String, which I usually link below. Um, but if you follow me on Instagram, I think I have a link to it in my, I don't know. It's hard to find anything on Etsy, I feel. Um, but it is linked in previous videos if you really wanna look it up. But she makes um, pom-pom wreaths and she has these beautiful pictures in the shop and I'm kind of showing what I'm working on for her, but, um, and I have some yarn that I dye in there and some finished objects that I post, that I pop in every once in a while when I decide, I've had this shawl in my stash for, that I made five years ago that I never wear. You know, sometimes I'll put those up there, but it's just a tiny little shop that we do for fun. But anyway, I've never made her socks. I've never made anyone in my husband's family socks. I'm super self-conscious about my knitting with them for some reason because I think because they're all so creative and talented and artistic like I've talked about in the past um, like Heather's an artist um, one of his other brothers and my, one of my other sister-in-laws is our super creative artists as well um, one of my other sister-in-laws is like she does she makes jewelry my mother-in-law crochets and she can paint and she has made us like beautiful um like wood trunks like as side tables that are in our house that she's just she, they're they're just all super creative and i just feel like well i just follow patterns and and make stuff <laughs> um but so i did ask heather if she wanted me to make a pair of socks for her for christmas and she said yes so i am making her the string of light socks by sock witchery and here's where i'm at so i'm making these two at a time, obviously, they're on the same needle. And this is the same skein of yarn. And look at how different these two socks look. I think that's so interesting. I like it, I hope Heather likes it. I think she will. And I mean, who knows how the rest of the sock is gonna turn out. Um, so anyway, when I was winding this yarn into a cake, the yarn snapped. That's never happened to me before. This is Rose Hill Yarns, A is for Apple. So to me, it reads like Christmas. Um, but it, the color is called A is for apple. So I just wound the second half into a ball. So it is the same yarn. It looks so different, which I think is so fun. So I hope she loves these. I'm working on them. I decided to do the string of lights pattern because it's a little, um, it's, you know, pretty stretchy. So it can, I think it'll fit her foot well. I'm going to, I don't know if I'm going to do a fish lips kiss heel or a heel flap and gusset. I haven't decided yet. I don't really like doing a heel flap and gusset on like um, two at a time. So I might just do fish lips kiss heel, but we'll see. I haven't gotten that far yet, obviously, but this is coming along and I like it. It's been fun. Again, that is a super simple textured pattern. I could see myself 
doing the string of lights pattern a lot sort of like the Hermione's everyday sock it's like sometimes you just find a texture that's like super rhythmic and fun and that's how I feel like all of these socks are so far which is great so this I cast it on casted I cast on on September 22nd okay I'll take a break from socks for a second because I know I'm sock heavy today <laughs> So my sister's birthday is coming up, and if you've been watching me for the last few years, you'll know that I always make my sister something for her birthday and for Christmas. Um, yeah. So when I went to Seattle this past summer, we went to a yarn stop shop and she picked out this yarn. It is um, Noro Kagagori, I think I'm saying that right, um, which is really pretty. This is a cotton and silk blend she wanted a hat and I was like I didn't look at it that closely when we were at the yarn shop and I was like "Ooh, I'm not gonna be able to make you a hat out of that so then I said do you want like a wrap or I was trying to think what else I could do um because I mean my sister's tall she's like 5'11 so I probably couldn't make her a like a tank top out of this without buying more and this was a you know this is not an inexpensive yarn this is like a $30 skein of yarn but it also there's a lot of yardage but I didn't think it was quite enough for like a tank top and I didn't know if she would wear that so I said how about a wrap <laughs> and she was like that's fine so I looked up this yarn on Ravelry using the feature where you can like kind of search projects uh, yarn and then you can let me start again you can search the yarn and then find projects that people have made with it. And one that came up a lot is this garter triangle shawl by Loops Design Designs. And it looks like it had been offered as a free pattern with this yarn, like from, I don't know if Loops has a shop or something, but I could buy it for $3. So I did purchase it for $3 and, um, I was a little upset when I purchased it and saw what the pattern was and I was like this should have remained a free pattern but oh well it was three dollars it's not gonna break me but it that kind of bothered me a little bit but anyway I started this shawl I'm not very far but this is something I am planning on bringing with me on one of my trips just because this will be easy for like a hotel room before going to bed knitting and yeah so this is how far I am, I am right now. And I know this lighting is not great all of a sudden. But yeah, it's just garter. And you just add on um, stitch on each side, <laughs> every row, and, and it, it grows. <laughs> so I don't feel like I'm giving away any secrets here. But And then I have this stitch marker just so I know which is the front. And it's um, La Vie Boheme which is um, a rent stitch marker. I did a uh, Lady Dye Yarns uh, rent club once and it came with these great um, wooden stitch markers. I don't know, I don't know where they're from. I don't remember. Possibly Katrinkles, but I'm not sure. But anyway, it's coming along really nicely. This is fun yarn to work with. I'm actually really liking it. It kind of is kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of. It's kind of slubby. Like you can see like it has areas where it's thicker and thinner and it's fun. It's fun to work, work on and I'm enjoying it. Um, so I think I'm going to bring this with me for my second work trip this month where I'm going to be gone longer. So I'll have more nights in the hotel room I'm, and my nights are not that long. It'll be like two, two hours maybe before I go to sleep. Um, because like I've mentioned, my organizations like us to work when we're together. So <laughs> it's all good. And this is in this great bag. It is Sassy Sax by Yaddy. Yaddy maybe. Um, but this is made in the US and I won this last year uh, from Michael from Peace for Peace Crafting. So I thought we're finally in autumn. I'm gonna use my big autumn bag and I assume that this is gonna grow and uh, fill up this bag more. So yeah, that's a great one. And then I have, okay, <laughs> I have two sweaters and one more pair of socks. So I'm going to start with um, another sweater <laughs> that I cast it on. I've been going through this, um, this phase lately where I am trying to de-stash some of my yarn. 
and let me take a sip of tea to get into this. It all seems great. I find some yarn and I think, you know what? I have a lot of knit pick, knit picks, wool of the Andes. You know, I can probably de-stash one or two sweater quantities. And then I pull it out and I think, I don't remember what I was gonna make with this and maybe I should just cast that on. <laughs> So that's what happened. And I apologize, my lighting got really weird here. I feel like I look like I'm in hocus pocus all of a sudden. Oh well. So I cast it on the Harvest by Tin Can Knits. It is a, um, it is a stockinette cardigan. I do not have a, have a copy of the pattern in front of me because I'm just using it electronically. I've actually made this pattern before. My niece, Olive, um, when she was born, I made her a baby harvest. So I knew this, I knew the construction already and I remember enjoying it. So this is as far as I am. And this is a free pattern so I can really talk about it, which is nice. Um, it's Oh my gosh, this yarn looks so pretty in this light though. So the yarn that I'm using is um, Knit Picks Wool of the Andes and it is Shire Heather and it's green. I don't think it's picking up. Oh, it is really pretty. Like when you see it in the sun, it is so pretty. I didn't even realize it was that pretty. Um, here it is in the, in the ball. Yeah, my lighting is just not great today. I'm sorry. Um, but here's the label. So what you do is you cast on provisionally and then depending on what size you make and all of Tin Can Knit, Tin Can Knit's patterns are, well, I don't know if I can blanket say all of them, but a lot of their patterns are newborn through um, trip 3x maybe. I mean, they go, they're, they're super size inclusive and it's great. So very accessible. So if you wanna make the same cardigan for a baby and an adult, you can make a matching cardigan. You can, you know, make it for your teenager. It, it, they're great patterns. So for this one, the reason I like this one a lot is you cast on provisionally and then you do garter for however many rows for your for your pattern. And then you 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 pick up. I don't remember exactly how you do it, but then you kind of you pick up your stitches along here and then you start to knit the cardigan with the button band included. So like this one I knit the cardigan and then I picked up and knit this button band. And with this one, as you're knitting the cardigan, the the button band, it's a garter band is already there. So it's really a nice construction because then when you're done with the body, you're done with the body and you don't have to go back and pick anything up. So it's really great. Um, I don't have much to say about it. I'm just doing the raglan increases right now. And I think I'll be, I mean, it's like here. So I think I'll be splitting for sleeves soonish, and then it's just knitting down and then picking up and adding sleeves to it. So this one has been bringing me joy and it doesn't need a ton of brain power, which is really good because my eastbound sweater has gotten to a point where it needs brain power and that's a little hard for me sometimes. So speaking of the eastbound sweater, I will get into that one next. And that is in this bag by I Heart You, which is Laura. And she has a YouTube channel called I Heart Knitting and she is very sweet and she makes lovely bags. This is my favorite one. So the Eastbound Sweater by Courtney Kelly has been giving me a little trouble. I, I still like it and we're getting through it. That's, that's a big thing. The main problem is I am using this black yarn. So this is, um, Cloudborn, Superwash, I have it written down. Why am I, why am I trying to guess? Cloudborn Fiber Superwash Highland Worsted, and it is in black. And 
I don't know if you can really see on this picture, but there's all this texture going on. And that's what I'm getting into. So I've gotten to a point where, all right, what do we have here? Where I have split the, the sweater. I finished all the increases on the sides. So I showed those last time. And then you put the sleeves, the front, and the other sleeve on. For me, I'm putting on pony cord lacing. And then you work the back. So I have had to work this back about three times. And it's not because it's difficult, because it is not. It is not difficult in the least. But working with black yarn is hard. And then I'm just gonna flash, flash the charts. So there's five charts you work from. And they're not next to each other. And on the wrong side, you have to go from left to right. And on the right side, you go from right to left. But then you also have to like reverse the charts. And I was getting lost in them. So what I did was I made, I used some like a snipping tool on the pattern. And I took the charts and I put them in order in a Word document and like this. So now, I can go through and highlight and then I can be like, okay, I'm doing this, 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 this. And then when I go back, I go this, this, this here, this, this, this. And I just needed that organization to get me through these charts. <laughs> they're not hard. It's knits and pearls. Knits and pearls. I think there might be maybe some yarn overs and slip slip knits coming up, but it's not hard knitting, but the charts just were not organized in a way that was working well for the way my brain works. And also using black yarn, I couldn't really read what I had done very well. And then the other thing is, there is, it's not a bad pattern, but it's not a hold your hand pattern. And there is like a cable that, that repeats a few times. I don't even know if you can tell that that's a cable right there. There's like two right cross cables and two left cross cables. Nowhere in the instructions, and I've read this thing over many times, does it tell you how to do those. So luckily I know how to do them and I just used the same cables I was using for my Read More socks and I was able to do that. But it this pattern does have a few things that are not, that do not make it easy. So we're, I'm, I'm going to take this with me on my trip, and the, the one that I'm going on this week. And I'm going to hopefully maybe finish the back in the evenings in my hotel room because I will have Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday night. And then Friday morning, they didn't, they told me originally that we were going to have meetings until 11, so not to fly out till the afternoon. Well, this is like on the West Coast, and I live in Milwaukee, and there's no direct flights anywhere in the world to Milwaukee right now <laughs> since the pandemic. So then after I made my flights and they said, oh, you can leave, you know, Friday morning. Well, it was too late and I couldn't change my flight. Um, so I do have like a morning of knitting um, on Friday morning as well. Depends on what this uh, hotel is like because the pictures make it look like it might be really pretty to walk around. So I may or may not have like a full morning of knitting before I travel. We'll see, we'll see. I am also bringing my work computer so I may have to do some work, but I'm just gonna kind of see where, where, the, where, where the time takes me. But if I can get through the back at least, I think that would be really a good goal for me for this week while I'm traveling and then doing knitting socks um, on the plane, I think. I might be able to finish something. We'll see. But that's my thought right now. So it's going along. I do, I think I do, I finish the back. I do the front. I think there's some saddle sleeves, which I've never done. So there's a lot of new techniques in this sweater for me. And it's not hard. It's just different. You know, like I, I prefer sometimes just the easy knitting, but sometimes you got to level up. And I, I really want this sweater. So I'm, I'm trying to level up my knitting a little bit. a lot to talk about that holy cow all right so let me put this one away it's coming I'm really hopeful that when it's done you can see all this work that I am putting into <laughs> these charts um but yeah okay last one finally you guys like I said I just 
I am who I am and I'm gonna stop acting like I'm gonna try to change because I don't wanna change. <laughs> I love to cast on. All right, my last new cast on. <laughs> I kind of alluded to um, Christmas. So this is a Christmas cast on. This is in a bag by Sandy by the lakeside. I don't know if she's really making project bags anymore. I just saw her on Instagram. She had these like, it's like gorgeous leather tote that was everything that I want in this world. Um, but I'm sure that I'm not going to be able to purchase it right now. But um, she used to make project bags. I've had this for at least five years. Um, so I don't know, but check her out because she makes beautiful leather things as well. All right, I cast it on this sock. And this is uh, the Cozy Knitter. I got this yarn off of eBay. It was a D stash on eBay and it's called Elf. You've been Elfed. So it came with this contrast mini and then it's just a red and white stripe. And this is either gonna be for me or my daughter. I haven't decided. Um, I guess I'm gonna see if she likes it or if she's just like, mom, that's too basic for Christmas, then it'll be for me. <laughs> so we'll see. This also might be a good one for traveling. But I mean, how many socks should I take? I just don't know. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, so here it is in the cake. It's just red and white, like candy cane. And then at first I was really not feeling this minty green, but the, the more it goes, the more I like it. And I, I think it's really cute. So I took this to my son's last fall ball game of the year. If you guys have been here for a while, you know that my son plays on a travel team and this fall ball has been awful. I mean, most of the boys are playing some form of football and getting hurt. My son is playing flag football and doing cross country. So like, they're just not like at their best, I would say. Um, and plus we're playing really hard teams in this league we decided to do this year for some reason. But anyway, I hadn't been knitting at his games because I was like, I'm kind of competitive. Um, it's not great, but I, I'm definitely like a cheerer at the games. So sometimes I just stand because I pace, but I found that like, you know what? Sometimes I don't like that version of myself. So I'm going to try and sit and knit. So I did. And I did, I mean, quite a bit of knitting at this game and the boys played excellent. It was like so good. So I'm like, okay, I have to get back to knitting at the games because maybe if I'm just not that focused on what's happening on the field, it'll be better. <laughs> no, that makes me sound like a horrible, like I'm like one of those like tire moms with baseball, but it's not that it's just, I like, I like, I like competition a lot and I, I like winning. Um, but I'm also like, if you play well and if you do your best, I'm always proud of you. You know, I, I'm not like someone who's like crazy and puts a lot of pressure on their kids. I just, I happen to be a little bit more competitive than I ever realized. <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah, so that sock's coming along nicely. Okay, you guys, we made it through all my whips. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is long. And I've got stuff to do, I gotta finish this up. So we're gonna do a really quick book club today. I did not show my DK Musselboro. I have put a few more rows on it, but not enough to show today. It looks basically the same, so I'll do that another time. And I also didn't show my Miserina. It's close. I'm just not picking it up right now. It's just not the thing I'm gravitating towards. But once I do pick it up, I'll probably finish it in an afternoon or, you know, a weekend. So hopefully that'll be done soon. But they are still happening. I just, I mean, I had a lot to show today, so I, I pulled a few things back. All right, for book club. I don't know if I talked about it last time, but I know I was reading and now I have finished The King Will Kill You by Sarah Henning. I gave that three stars. I really enjoyed it. However, I thought it was the weakest book in the trilogy. I give the trilogy as a whole four stars. Very charming, very sweet fantasy. Um, it, it, it remind, you know, it's based off of The Princess Bride. So it had a lot of great, features for someone like me and I really enjoyed it. So um, if that sounds interesting, I would definitely recommend that whole trilogy. Um, the first book's the best, second, second best, and the third one was I'd say the the weakest, but it was good. Had a lot of really great um, 
kind of feminist leadership barriers that were really interestingly um, looked into. And I, I, I do think it was good. It just, you know, when you love a first book, it's hard. It's hard always for trilogies and me. I always love the first book the best, except for A Court of Thorn and Roses. I like the second book the best in that one. And then the third book was just fine, you know, but the second book like blew me away. But we're not talking about that today. <laughs> and then I also finished Maybe Someday by Colleen Hoover. I generously gave this three stars. It was not my favorite Colleen Hoover book. It felt like more of her sophomore effort. I, it's not one of her more recent books. I think her writing's gotten stronger in her more recent publications. Um, it was just, it was just all right. Um, let me think. It sort of felt, I think the biggest thing I didn't like about it is like if, you know, the main character falls in love basically with a guy who's got a girlfriend and then there's like, he's fighting his feelings for her. And it just like, for those of us who have been cheated on, like that's not a good look. And it just, I didn't love that. So I had a hard time with that the entire time that I was reading the book, but it was fine. Um, I think she has better options. So if you're new to Colleen Hoover, oh man, I gotta take a break from her soon. But like I said, my room, my, uh, my roommate, I don't have a roommate, I, well, I have three, but my neighbor really, really, really likes Colleen Hoover. So now she's like giving me all the books that she's gone through. And I have a couple on Audible that I'd bought. So I need a break soon. But I, as you'll see, I don't have a break yet. Then I finished Real Men Knit by Kiana Jackson. I hope I said her name right. I love this. Um, I gave it three stars only because I didn't like the ending. Like I felt like I just love the characters. You know, uh, it was just so fun takes place in a yarn shop you know there are other things going on as well but the strong female character i really enjoyed um you know i enjoyed having some men in a yarn store i thought it was great um i loved it so i actually already purchased the second uh book uh called not again like k-n-o-t again i think and i'll be reading that soon i i liked this book a lot and then I read kind of an interesting departure called The Last to See Me by M. Dressler. And I gave this four stars. This was like a ghost story. And I don't know if it's just the time of year that it resonated with me, but I really liked this book. So it kind of flipped back between the ghost now and kind of who she's haunting. And then there's um, a cleaner who comes in. He's been hired to try to like clean the ghost out of this house. Um, and he's working with this real estate agent. And so that's kind of the present of they're trying to figure out who the ghost is and how to get rid of her. And then it goes back and forth between that and then the ghost's life and sort of what brought her to why she's haunting, I guess. And I really loved it. There was a twist at the end that was a little complicated and difficult to totally understand what happened, but it wasn't so crazy that I didn't enjoy the ending. Um, I really, really like this one. So if you like ghost stories, uh, this was a good one. The Last to See Me by M. Dressler. Then I finished The Book Woman of Troublesome Creek and I did not write down the author's name and I can't recall what it is. I gave this three stars. I liked it. I didn't love it. I, my mom, <laughs> sorry about that. I, my mom really loved this book. And I know a lot of people have really loved it. It is really good. Um, Well-researched. It's about this family who's part of the blue people in Kentucky who truly are blue, like Smurf blue because of a blood disorder. And then she's also a book woman. So it was really, really well-researched, really good. I think the reason I didn't love it is because I feel like I've read a book like this already. And I can't remember what it was, but I liked it. It's solid. It's good. I, you know, it, it's fine. There are things in the book where I'm like, well, we could have used maybe a little bit more about that, but it was good. My mother now has given me the book woman's daughter or something like that. I'm going to wait a while before I read it. I liked it. I didn't love it. Um, so probably around 
next summer. I'll get to that one. I'm not in a hurry. But I gave it three stars. I thought it was solid. And if you haven't read anything about the book Women before, like I feel like I did. And I just can't remember what, what it was exactly. But this was, it, it's really good and really interesting. Very historically accurate, I think. And also the blue people are really interesting. And I didn't know about them before this book. So a lot of interesting things. Okay. And then I went down memory lane and I read Killing Mr. Griffin by Lois Duncan. And you guys, it was so good. <laughs> I remember reading it when I was in high school. And like, to me, this was a really groundbreaking book for me. Um, Lois Duncan, I read a lot of her books. R.L. Stein. I was trying to find a book by R.L. Stein that I remember reading, but I couldn't remember what it was about. And man, R.L. Stein has got a ton of titles. So I couldn't even begin to think about what it was that I possibly read that I was thinking of. But I did remember Killing Mr. Griffin. So I decided to pick it up and read it. I did listen to it on Audible. And the only thing I didn't like, so I gave it three stars. This is a very three star book episode for me because they changed it. They, <laughs> they tried to like modernize it by, you know, saying like, oh, let's find a song on my iPod or, you know, oh, their Apple phone, their iPhone. And I was like, okay, I read this in the 90s probably. And I know we didn't have iPods and Apple phones. And so then I went back and the original publication date is 1978 or the original publication year is 1978. Why did they have to change it? There's nothing wrong with a book being a staple of its time. And that, that bothered me. So I think that pulled me out just a little bit. Um, and there are things obviously that would not be the same if it was written now, but it was a nice jog down memory lane and I enjoyed reading it. Okay, last book guys, I swear. <laughs> it's been a while since I've been on here and I've been reading voraciously. Like I've been reading like it's chocolate. Like I just am consuming books lately and I think I'm stressed too. So I've been reading a lot. Uh, Wrong Place, Wrong Time by Jillian McAllister. Five stars. I loved this book. This was so good. Um, it's a bit of a mystery. I won't give too much away, but basically this woman is what, waiting for her son to come home. She's got an 18 year old son and on his when he's coming home for, for his curfew or whatever, she looks outside and she watches him stab a man to death. And so she and her husband run out and they see this man die. The police are called and um, he's taken to jail. They go to jail. And, and then, you know, she's like, what happened to bring us to this moment in, in our lives? And then she goes to sleep. And when she wakes up, it's the day before. And so then the, the story goes backwards and every day like she starts out like trying to explain to like her husband and other people like what's happening to her and how what should she do and she starts to learn more about everything and i just thought it was so well crafted and so phenomenally executed that i gave it five stars i really like this book and i heard about this from karen on my favorite murder and she has recommended books in the past that I haven't loved, but this one was really good. So if that sounds interesting to you, it's it's a great read. I loved it. I, I like couldn't put it down. I like was walking around the house listening to it and like, I was like, don't, don't talk to me. Like <laughs> I was really into it. I loved it. And then right now I am reading, don't judge me too harshly. I am reading Reminders of Him by Colleen Hoover. This is thanks to my neighbor because she's reading it at the same time. And I knew I had it on my Audible, so we're reading it together. And that's really all I'm reading right now. I um, I think I might try to read A Curse of Blood and Stone by K.A. Tucker a little bit while I am traveling, if I need a break from knitting or podcasts or whatever. Um, I have that on my Kindle, so I might try to get back into that series and read that book soon. But right now, I'm just listening to Reminders of Him. <laughs> and... After this, I am taking a long break from Colleen Hoover. She's fine. It's fine. But there's so many other authors out there that I would like to read. So I know we've been Colleen Hoover heavy this year. My apologies. 
<laughs> well, that's it, you guys. Thanks for hanging on. This was a long one. I really appreciate you guys. If you want a prize, please contact me. And I don't know when I'll be back. It depends on how much knitting I get done this week, I guess. <laughs> maybe I'll jump on here before my next trip, or maybe I'll just wait till after my second trip. So anyway, I hope you're great. I hope you're enjoying whatever you're working on. And please reach out anytime to say hello and let me know what you're reading and what you're working on. And take care. Bye.